uh, lecture for you guys today on ladies' fashion, um, specifically in the year 1815. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the things that I'm wearing. And as I go, as I'm sure some of you have inferred by the title, I will be taking off layers one by one and, and talking a little bit about them. So a couple of little disclaimers about that. One, don't worry. Well, it may seem like in the period I am incredibly uh, undressed and almost, uh, well, not almost, completely inappropriate, you're not going to see anything for a couple of reasons. One, it's not that kind of show. Sorry, guys. <laughs> You, you came to this lecture with a, I'm sure, a completely different mindset. Um, you're going to be so bored. This is not what you thought it was. Second of all, a little bit of a, a, a modern note, I wear a skin-colored leotard underneath everything, so there's not going to be anything. So don't, don't feel uh, a little bit afraid uh, when I get down to my shift. It's a pretty okay cotton, and I will have my uh, pen more over it, so don't worry. Uh, however, I would like... Oh, I'm, I'm a little bit nearsighted, so I cannot quite see. Oh, I like all the gents to raise their hands. Don't, don't be afraid to. By all means, do. All right, now, which of those gents are here attached to their uh, lady? Now you actually have to raise your hand. You can't pretend like you're not. Where is your lady here? Yes. Where is she? Raise your hand. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Never mind. Now we're getting off lucky, because what I usually tell the gentlemen who are attached is there will reach a point where I become very inappropriate for mixed company, and if you do not take that instant moment to avert your gaze, uh, I give your wife full permission to slap you. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, she seems a little bit busy at the moment, so you won't like that. Instead, I'm sure you and my dear husband can work it out on the dueling fields tomorrow. Okay. So, what I have on for you today, uh, with the addition of my very important accessory, is an appropriate outfit for out and about promenade or walking, um, even visiting. With the exception of a couple of accessories, in real time it is night outside, so I would not have my parasol on me, but had it been the bright sunshiny afternoon we had, it is a necessity to, to have on me, as well as my shawl, but it is much too hot for that. So say, uh, these lovely ladies here are my acquaintances, and I am new in town, and I'm going to take uh, a moment in the morning or early afternoon to come calling on them. So I come up to the door and I knock and I'm going to stay for my 15 minute visit. This is what I would wear when I step on their doorstep. Now, I'm invited in of course. For my 15 minute visit, I would very likely not remove any of my articles and keep them on. I'm not there for a very long time. I'm going to be leaving again soon to go call on many people. I'm a socialite. There are a lot of people that uh, are uh, in, in need of my company, as you see. Now, if it was going to be a longer visit, there are some things that I would take off inside of the home for it to be more appropriate. The first thing would be my hat, which I would then pass off to whatever servant happened to be waiting to take my things. Uh, something very interesting about my hat, as you will see, it's not like, it is not a very utilitarian <laughs> garment. It is to look pretty and to look pretty only. And when I had it on, as you see, there's not much in the way of sunshade happening, is there? Which is why I would need my parasol. Ladies, I have noticed this new trend that you are partaking in. Quite a few of you, especially the, the younger pretty ladies, and this is what breaks my heart the most. You sit and purposely expose yourself to the sun for long periods of time. Please don't do that. <laughs> Nobody wants to be browned like a field hand. You look like a poor peasant worker. How unseemly! Now, if you are a poor peasant worker, I'm very sorry, carry on. <laughs> but if you're not, please desist in doing that. By all means, keep your beautiful porcelain complexion. Besides, it'll make you look young for so much longer. Ladies, really, that's all what we want, right? So again, my parasol is a necessity because my hat is not doing its job. But it does look good, doesn't it? That's all that matters, really. <laughs> so, I want to talk a little bit about the shape of it. This is a very uh, interestingly shaped hat and very appropriate for the 1810s and teens period. Uh, this is what you would call a beehive hat for obvious reasons. A little bit about that shape. Uh, and mine has a fun little dip in the front that was a fortuitous accident. I picked it up once and wasn't paying attention and it put a great big dip in there, but um, it was almost centered. I centered it and put it on and thought I liked it much better. That's nothing new, by the way. That's been going on for hundreds of years and uh, will probably still continue to go on. That's how the best fashions are discovered. Accidents. 
Now, the shape of these hats in the 1810s and teens were made this way to accommodate the change of hair. As you can see with my hair, I'm going to put things here, by the way, guys. So when I am through, you are more than welcome to come up and look at things if you would like. Um, my only uh, my request is to not manhandle the hat too much because it is blocked straw and it will lose its shape. Um, but feel free to, to look at some of the things. But as you can see, my hair is tight and piled high to the top of the head uh, as best I can. It's being a little bit unruly today. Early on in the era, uh, well, as if we can think even further back, my mother's youth, the hair was quite big and tall in the um, mid and later 18th century, and hats were sort of made to accommodate that as best they could. It's rather difficult when you have hair almost as tall as you piled atop. That is, of course, your extreme fashionables. I cannot imagine my own dear mother would do such a thing like that. Uh, but as the fashion progressed and we became more and more to the neoclassical line, hair became closer and tighter to the head. Uh, early in the 19th century, very early, about 1800 to 5, uh, 1800 to 1805, the hair was very short. It was uh, popular for young women to cut it very close to the head. Uh, it would be called um, the Titus Coupure, or à la victime, from the French, you know, the, uh, the um, guillotine and stuff like that, the terror. It was a bit of a political fashion statement as well, which, as a woman, is all, the only thing you can do. Uh, and things like my Spencer will talk about that in a little bit. Um, in fact, Jane Austen mentions, I think it is one of her nieces has cut off all of her hair. And Miss Austen knew better and was cleverer than the rest that in just a little while that fashion would go away and her poor niece would still be stuck with the short hair because it does not grow back to waist length overnight. And she lamented the fact that her niece had taken such a drastic measure and such a, a fashionable folly. But as it progressed through the tens and through the teens, so uh, when I say tens, I mean 10, 11, 12, and then the teens, 13 uh, to 19, uh, the hair started to be piled um, higher and more ornate, which is a little bit of what I've got going on today. Uh, had it been evening, I would have had it more of an elaborate style. So the hats started to change shape, and instead of being elongated, they went up like this, which is very much as mine does. So I passed on my hat to the servant. The next thing that would come off is another very important accessory, and those are my gloves. You remember how we talked about the whole trying to keep your skin porcelain and out of the sun as much as possible? This is another thing that would go with that. Uh, gloves are worn all year round, during the day and during the evening. For the evening, it was just to cover your arms, and it was a very flattering thing to do. Um, and for the day, it was to protect your hands from the sun. So year round, winter, spring, summer, and fall. Winter, for obvious reasons, no one likes cold hands. Summer, just to keep them nice and white. Uh, gloves could be made out of all manner of materials. Uh, mine happened to be kid skin. Uh, very, very supple. Um, they're pretty old, so they've seen a lot of love. Uh, doe skin, of course. Um, then there's limerick, which is a little bit extreme. Uh, limerick gloves were actually sold in walnut shells to show how fine they were. They were so fine that they could be folded up and put in walnut shells. They're actually made out of the skin of unborn calves. So, a little bit extreme, a little bit expensive as well. Uh, chicken skin was another very popular one like that. <coughs> Both of those later styles, the chicken skin and the limerick gloves, were thought if you wore them, it would keep your arms look and hands looking youthful for your entire life. We know today the reason for that is because you get them out of the sun so much. So it was sort of a little bit of a um, snake oil kind of tactic there. So, there those are. And then the last thing that I would hand off would be probably my most, other than my parasol, important accessory, and that is my reticule, which is my bag that carries all the important and sundry items I may need on my promenades, walks, and visits. Uh, sometimes I would even have a work bag with me, which would be maybe about twice the size, but have any needlework that I needed done. This is a social call. I'm not going to work or anything like that, which even uh, a wealthy woman like myself, it's not a bad thing that I took a little bit of sewing. It shows that I have good braiding and good accomplishments, and I was good with needle and thread. I don't need to make my own clothes, but I have the ability to. 
Uh, so this is just my reticule, and I've noticed uh, a lot of women have one that's a similar idea, but it's practically three times the size, and I am concerned about that, and also wonder if it doubles as a mode of transportation. Perhaps I could hitch one of the mules I see to it, and it could get me from one end of the world to the other. I can't quite fathom or understand the reason it being so big. I'm just going to assume that's why. Don't tell me otherwise. It's too much fun to imagine that. Now let's see what I have got in mind today. I've got a second pair of gloves, uh, because a woman can never be too well prepared, and because I'm forgetful and left them in there. It's too important being fashionable to remember little things like that. Uh, I've got letters, I've got money, though I don't suppose this would be legal tender here in America. This is a uh, British pound note, only one pound. I'm not allowed to carry much ready cash on me probably for safety reasons, and because uh, my dear husband does not want to part with too much at one time. So, in the other case then, would be my credit card. This is a letter of credit. I would show this to any merchant, they would read what it says on it, and go, oh, I will just charge this to so-and-so's account. Either it could be a parent, or in this case, my husband. Fascinating, isn't it? I will leave it out if you would like to see it. Uh, this is my older one, however. This is um, the letter of credit from my guardian, Mr. Hedgewood. Though now I'm married, I don't need this one anymore. Uh, I think there may be a reason my husband has not written me one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to assume it's because he forgot it. It's not because he stopped loving me. Let's see. Have I got anything else? Usually what I would have in here as well uh, is something called a purse. Now. I'll the mistake a lot of people make is they will call this a purse. This is not a purse, this is a reticule. A purse goes in the reticule. Not confusing at all, is it? Uh, it's what you would uh, see referred to as a miser's purse, or sometimes a Nelson purse, because he had one. Um, and it is a uh, woven, it's a very specific type of weave called spraying. Uh, I've also seen them knit and maybe crocheted. The jury is still out on that research wise. Purse is maybe about this big, a little bit of a tube with two rings, and you would put your money on either side because, other than pound notes, the money at the time was all coinage. And that's how you would carry your ready money on you. So, I've deposited all my important and uh, various accessories with the servant who will probably take it up to my room if I'm going to be there for an extended period of time. The only reason I would hand off all these items is very likely because of that scenario. So, uh, I'm off to go sit and enjoy myself. Now, if the weather was cold, I would likely keep my jacket on. It's spring, and I don't know about the rest of you, I have been enjoying the lovely weather very well. I have not, however, been enjoying the mosquitoes, but with the lovely weather comes the mosquitoes, there's nothing you can do about it, is 